Hello, and welcome to the Money Metaphors podcast with Jason Coddington. Jason, good to be with you again. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to be here today. Uh, we like. I'm topic. excited. I'm excited, frankly, because I the the name of this podcast, this this edition of your podcast, is one of my favorite names ever. The map is not the territory. Like that is great. I don't know where it came from, but I I love it. Yeah, and I didn't know where it uh, came from either. I heard it years ago, and uh, you know, of course, thanks to Google, um, we were able to find. You know, it's, the guy's name was an engineer. Um, his name is Alfred Korzyski, and I uh, hopefully get that name right. If his relatives are listening um, or his heirs, <laughs> hopefully they're not. I didn't offend them, but yeah, I love that quote because um, financial planning and investing is absolutely not. Uh, it's not linear, and what I mean by that is. You don't just someone says, well, the average return in stocks is, you know, 10 percent or 7 percent. Well, that doesn't mean you just automatically are entitled to that number for the rest of your life. Um, so uh, the map is not the territory. And being I think we mentioned earlier, you know, a little bit about me. You know, I like to hike. I like to backpack. And, uh, you know, the analogy there is, is that, and I can say this, you know, if you look at a map, you uh, you know, whether it's a topographical map or a hiking map, and you just start out on a course, the map is absolutely not the territory. You know, no, it's things, not. <laughs> there's uh, especially in the Sierra Nevadas, you have climate, you have weather, um, animals, of course. Um, and so all of that uh, has to be taken into account. And, you know, you have to plan. And stock investing is, is no different. So today we want to give you a uh, one of the phrases I've also heard of, we want to give you uh, navigational intelligence today oh. as as a stock investor. And so some of those things will be, you know, we'll discuss, we've got three major points. And one of those is, you know, why in the world do we do stocks in the first place? Like, why do we, why should you do them? And we'll talk about that too, is, you know, you need to know what that means to be a stock investor. Um, and I'm, and we're going to use a lot of analysis examples today and i'm going to speak just about the the stock market in general the united states stock market the s p 500 but you know there are some characteristics of that uh vehicle if you will mm. that you know needs to be known and then we'll follow it up with you know just persistence you know that's a that's a key endeavor and just like if you're on a backpacking or a hiking trip you know some days you're going uphill um and you're going slow and it's cold or there's rain and you know it's just one foot at a time it's just persistence and so um that is uh that is what we're going to discuss today and that's what we hope to uh, get out of it so and uh hopefully after listening to this podcast today you will be a more empowered uh equity or stock investor and when there's turbulence in the market or there's noise out there in the news you'll be able to come back to these three characteristics uh or behaviors if you will and stay the course so yeah that makes total sense you're right having having done my share of, of of hiking and having a good friend of mine who is a wilderness hiker and camper the uh, you plan you prepare you look at where you're going but looking at it and looking at it on a map it's nothing like actually taking the journey through the territory that you're going to you know it just it may help the map will help you from getting from getting lost. The map will give you an idea of where you want to go, but the experience of walking that trail or out in that wilderness, uh, you need to be prepared, and then you can feel confident about what you're doing. I think it, you know what you know what I'm saying. Absolutely, yeah. I think that um, you know, and it's and there's resources. You know, when you hike, you can talk to rangers, you can talk to other hikers. You know, probably the the one thing with the you know, the one thing, at least out here, that's important is, you know, you need to plan your, if you're doing a through hike, you need to plan where you're getting water, you know, your water supply. Yes. And, you know, many, I can't tell you how many times we've looked on a map and said, oh, well, there should be water up ahead. And we get there and it's, you know, because it's late in the summer, it's dry. So, right. um, you know, that wasn't the case this past summer in the Sierras, but, you know, that it, that has happened. And so it's nice to have quote unquote, that navigational intelligence from other hikers or rangers. And it's like, oh, you know, you guys should camp here um, or there's going to be water two miles up, you know, those kinds of things that that's helpful. So um, yeah. 
And if you don't, and if you don't know if you're going to have water or not, when you see it top off, <laughs> <laughs> exactly, you know, so top off yeah. and drink it sparingly. Yeah, absolutely yes. right. But it's true. So, you know, I've been covering business and financial news and markets for a really, really long time. And one of the things that I've learned, and I, you can speak to this better than me because you counsel people all of the time. I don't think a lot of people are prepared for markets. You know, they, they hear about great returns or so-and-so made a tremendous return, but the reality of the markets is quite different. As you, as, as the analogy suggests, look, you need to sit down and have realistic expectations and you need to be prepared. Yeah. And I, and look, and Mike, you know, well, I was a young child, but I've been alive for, uh, three major stock market declines yeah. uh, of over 50 in the last I'm 51. So, you know, 72, 2000, and of course, 2009. Um, and I will say, you know, um, as a prof I was in the profession for 2000 to 2003 and of course the 2008 to 2009. And yeah, there's a, uh, to have that discipline and do it on your own is, you know, it, it's, it takes some uh, self resilience. You'll need that. And, but most important, I think for those clients, you know, our clients that were, were educated and stuck to their plans, you know, they all ended up fine. And it was, you know, those that, that panicked um, or those individuals that panicked and, you know, took money on the sidelines, you know, they, they missed out. And, you know, we'll talk about a little bit, but staying in the markets, you know, um, is important staying invested, but, you know, I think where, where, you know, having perspective and knowing that, Hey, this is, this is part of the deal. And, you know, you know, having stock market declines of, you know, upwards of 20 to 30% is normal. Just as if you're hiking in the Sierras, you're going to have thunderstorms in the middle of the summer at two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes, you know, so, I mean, that's, uh, that's, it's, it's normal and you need to prepare for it. And so hopefully today you're going to, we're going to empower you uh, to do that. Well, know? how do you do so, that? When, when, when you have clients that come in, either prospective clients or, or existing clients come in to sit down to talk with you, what, what do you tell them? How, how do you guide them? Yeah, I think so. We, you know, if you're to come in, you know, we're going to first talk about you know your goals, and I think you know we've mentioned before that if you have the the longer term goals you have, the more appropriate stock investments are for that. We'll reinforce yeah. that you know today, but so we would say you know again, if, so assuming it's long term, why in the world you know let's confirm why you're doing stocks in the first place. So you know what we get the question, Jason. Well, why why couldn't I do something else? And we'll just, we're just going to start with, there's this crazy word, um, inflation. And mm -hmm. so first of all, to know why you're using stocks is because historically speaking, United States stocks have historically been the best defense. Again, no, no guarantee for future, but, right. uh, returns, but they have historically been the best defense and best fighter against inflation. Um, so what you're really doing stocks for is to protect your future purchasing power, you know, um, and, you know, and inflation kind of sneaks up on you. Of course, in the last few years, uh, inflation has got a lot of news, but it's honestly over time, historically speaking, been a very silent uh, way to have your money erode is the loss of purchasing yes. power. So. So just a couple, I thought it'd be fun just to kind of share, you know, well, what does that look like? So if I go back to, you know, 1980, you know, I'm 18 years, or excuse me, I'm eight years old in 1980. The price of a house uh, is, the average price of a house in the United States is 68,000. Wow. Um, the price of a home today, uh, well, as of 2021, 408,000. Whoa. So go to you know uh average wages uh in 1980 uh 19,500 you know that number in 2021 is 51,480 holy uh, smoke somewhat th this one's always fun especially well in california it's really fun because um this number is not going to resonate but nationally the average cost of gas in the united states in 1980 was 1.19 and you know, as of in 
as of let's say April of 21, it was 2.87. Now in California, just add another two bucks for tax. And that's, that's <laughs> I was going to say in California, yeah. you got to do an add on. But so the point there is, is not yet think prices go up. And if you're not, and you know, the, you know, the average return for stocks over the last 20 years has been 11.1%. So not bad. Um, and over the last 20 years, inflation has been 2.68%. So that's, again, you know, if you want to protect your purchasing power, 11.68%, or excuse me, 11.1% versus 2.68%, you get the idea there, there's a big gap there. Yeah. So that is why we recommend individuals um, be in stocks. Now you take that over 50 years, right? So let's say you're a 40-year-old individual and you want to retire at 20 retire in 20 years and so you'll um be 60 and then from there you're going to live to 90 that's a 50 year time horizon right so um in that period of time historically speaking over the last 50 years stocks have averaged 10.4 percent inflation 3.8 percent so if you're a worker and you're saving money and then you get to retirement and you still want to maintain your purchasing power it's stocks are you, it's a required it's it's required you know? Yeah. Um, so I think that's, that's the first thing I would tell clients is, you know, we have to, if there was another vehicle that did this for us, we would, we would be in it, but stocks are the way. Uh, so that's why. And then, but then that leads us kind of to what's next is okay. Well, if you're going to be a stock investor, um, you, you know, you really need to, you know, understand there's some, rules of the game <laughs> so, well there's some well, our rules like there are there are times when stocks can be scary you you, you talked about the 20 percent and 30 percent drops those are real those happen yeah yeah and they happen and i'm sure everybody remembers 2008 2009 recent memory and of course during covid i mean um, stock market dropped 30% in 2020 within a period of, you know, a few months right. only to rally again. But, uh, you know, looking back, you know, uh, what the nice thing that was most people, if they stayed invested during that turbulent time, even though we had no idea what the uh, pandemic was going to create, they were rewarded for their patience, you know, and, and, uh, you know, I, but what the That's problem scary, is, that, though. you know, you can know that I got to just interject here. You can know that. But but in defense of your clients who felt like they wanted to you know to, to you know faint or something, <laughs> I yeah I could totally understand how they feel because I I watched my portfolio get clobbered as well, and you know it is scary. It's scary. it is and and in fear is uh is a natural emotion. I mean you know it's not um it's not it's not uncommon and it's actually you I don't think you would be human if you saw those declines um and not be scared or worried i mean yeah. that's a common i think that's common and we and we embrace that and we understand that um the key point is is to remember i think in those times of turbulence um this reframing you know strategy we like is just once again remember why you're doing it you're doing it for a future a long objective. term not long a short term, term but a long term and, and that's hard to see, um, but, and that's, you know, again, hopefully today after listening to this, you'll be reinforced with some, you know, um, some facts that will help you be more confident as an investor. And I think, you know, I think I would look, you know, in 2018, uh, some friends and I, you know, we went hiking uh, and our goal was to get over every pass by, by noon. And the reason for that is, you know, you get, thunderstorms you get can get lightning you can get that and you don't want to be exposed on a on a path um you know or a pass without any cover <laughs> yeah and so that requires some you know you don't get to sleep in on those days you got it requires an early start you know so usually you know a 4 a.m or a you know 4 30 a.m start but as long, that helped us get over the pass and into the um you know and into the you know the, some cover if you will and, and of course, you know, things, if it rains, you got to stop and pitch a tent real quick and get some cover, those kinds of things. But I would say, you know, looking back, you know, the nice thing about that was we knew that the thunderstorms 
were likely, just like yeah. in investing, just like in investing, there are going to be ups and downs. And so because of our diligence and, you know, again, getting up early saved us on some of those things by not being exposed. And so, you know, I think that that's helped us, but you know, it is scary. It is you hear the thunder rolling and here you are <laughs> in the woods, in the wilderness, you know, you're not going inside and shutting the door. No. <laughs> so there's no cabin yeah. to run to. <laughs> right. Right. There's so, no cabin to run to. No, not at right. all. So, but fear is normal. I think with investing, but I think the, the, it's a normal emotion, but the, the, I think what's important is what do you, what actions do you take because of your emotions and yep. and the actions that you take should be in alignment always be in alignment with your goals and i think that is what helps investors stay the course when there's turbulence so do you find do you find do you find that it helps if you remind people that 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 seven percent average return is an average return over a long 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 period of time and that there have been many of these periods of times where stocks have gone down 20 and 30 percent because they're not in that period is known as a correction. And yeah, but when you look at the extended timeline of the stock of the stock market, it's an upward trend. Yeah, it's some yeah, it's uh years ago I heard this example, considering we're talking about hiking today, it's hiking uphill with a yo-yo. <laughs> <laughs> i like so that stock like investing that. is a, like hiking uphill with a yo-yo you know you're you're gradually slowly going uphill but the day-to-day -day is up and down and so that's um that's uh something i heard and i think it's fitting because that's really point number two is as we move into is this you know you have to know that stocks go up and down and you know it's interesting that we're doing this uh, today on November 29th of uh, 2023 because one of the greatest investors of all time, Charlie Munger, who was uh, Warren Buffett, you know, um, of Berkshire Hathaway fame, his right hand um, man, yeah, his right hand, yeah. And you know, the, and he's a great. And what he was, what I think we determined, he's 99. He died at 99, 99 years, of age. years old. So, yeah. but he had this quote, um, you know, considering that it's. You know, it just happens to be today, but it's fitting uh, for him. It says, if you're going to be in this game for the long haul, which is the way to do it, you better be able to handle a 50% decline without fussing too much about it. <laughs> there you go. So I, you know, and so that being said, what in the world does that mean? So I think, and, and now I'm going to, you know, we've talked about long-term. I just want to talk about, you know, what happens year to year. So if we were to look uh, over the last 43 years, so going back to 1980, uh, the stock market, you know, has averaged, the average up and down within a year has been 14.3%. So you can expect on a one year, on an annual basis, at least an average of 14%. That means if we start at zero, it could go up as high as, you know, 14 and it could go down negative 14. And of course there are years when it's, not as bad or less, but the crazy part of that is over the last 43 years, even though that's the market's gone up or down an average of 14%, down 14% a year within the year, 32 out of 43 years, it's been positive. So even though there's a down 32 out of the 43 years, it's been positive. So that's, those are pretty good odds. And if you, again, um, you just have to know that that as an as an equity investor, a long term investor, you are going to embrace, uh, you know, you're going to embrace these times, and and the key is to remember that you're focused on your long term your long term goals, and yeah. so um, fifty percent is a lot, you know. Yeah. No, <laughs> so. no, I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, I as a journalist, I covered a lot of violent up and ups and downs in the market. Uh, and you know, it's gut wrenching and it's scary and, you know, depending on where you are in life, it can, it can really be scary. Uh, but one of the things that people talk often about that I wanted to ask you about is what about this concept of, uh, of, of looking at your portfolio, maybe making changes or rebalancing the portfolio with what you hold. I mean, do you do that with your clients? Or you talk, you probably have that conversation, I would imagine. Yes, absolutely. We rebalance. And so again, and, and stocks are for most clients, I mean, obviously stocks are a part of 
most every client's portfolio. The percentage at which those stocks are of the portfolio depends largely upon your age, your goal, and how much either you're putting in and or taking out. But yeah. so to speak to rebalancing, um, you know, the, the, the key point there is, and we'll use, we'll go to very me recent memory uh, and use COVID, the, the COVID, uh, the pandemic, if you will, uh, yeah. as an example. So someone that started with, we'll just use, um, you know, a 70%, 70 stock and 30% cash or fixed portfolio. So that would be bonds. You know, March 1st of, of 2020, if that portfolio was 70-30 um, um, and the equity markets dropped 30%, which plus or minus, which they did, that 70 just dropped 30%. And all of a sudden you have now a 50-50 portfolio you don't have a 70 30 because yeah. the equity side yeah. drops so much. And so what, what happens there um, is clients and here's, what's tough. And you, there's a phrase, I, I forget which branch of the military says that it might be the Marines, um, but you, you have to run to the fight. And so what that means is, is it's a Marine, even, my friend. <laughs> yeah. And so um, if you are, what your gut is is to say, well, it's 50-50. Uh, I want to stay there. It's it's out of it's absolute important that you take that allocation back to 70-30. Um, so for example, you have 70% stocks, 30% bond, and because of the drop in equities now, assuming the bond market stayed flat, which which relatively it did in, in COVID, now your portfolio is 50-50. Uh you're not going to rise back as fast if you leave your portfolio in the 50 50 allocation yeah, yeah. it's out of whack yeah. so you have to and interesting enough the great thing about rebalancing is it reinforces this great thing that we've always talked about with stocks um is this strategy you've probably heard of called buy low and sell high and so if you are able to if stock prices are down you take money from the fixed income or bonds or cash and you put that into stocks when it's at its bottom, um, or at least when it's down, in this case, 30% in 2020, you now, when the market does turn up, you're going to come back at a more rapid pace than if you were to stay at the 50-50. And I can tell you that those clients that were adamant about rebalancing um, and you know we were able to help with that, that, that served them really well. Because if you remember, a year later after COVID, the market had set, you know, was on its pace to set new highs. And so yeah. um, it it was one of the fastest recoveries uh, in, in, well, in history. Uh, so economic and, you know, from a stock market perspective. So, uh, and again, there's public policy and things that went on there that we can talk about. But the, the point there is, is rebalancing is very, very critical. Um, staying invested uh, is critical. But you must know that if you're going to be an equity investor, uh, volatility is is going to be there. And I and I think one of the and then kind of to dovetail off of the rebalancing comment is volatility should really be your friend. I mean, you don't once you kind of get used to it um, and understand that stocks are going to go down, and you perhaps maybe have cash on the sidelines or your have a retirement plan you're contributing to at work. If stocks are down, that is an absolute opportunity to buy them at a cheaper price. And so, you know, when volatility happens, stock markets drop, that presents an opportunity for, for clients to, um, you know, add more when it's down. And uh, so we, we like that. I mean, it's crazy in, in our industry, you know, we're, we're coming into, you know, I don't know when this will be published, but we're kind of, we're recording it right around, you know, going into the Christmas holiday and everybody's looking for deals, right? Everybody wants something everybody on wants sale. Yeah, you bet. And, but in stocks, everybody wants to buy when it's at the all time high and everybody wants to sell at the all time low. I mean, invest, you know, different rating services, Morningstar, the investment uh, company Institute has data that shows that, Money goes the wrong way. So if if we're gonna buy stuff when it's cheap, 
we do that with a t-shirt we do that with you know a nintendo or a, a gaming console but we don't do that with stocks it's very paradoxical but that's exactly what should happen when there's volatility is um is seek well, that give me is scary i mean you know yeah I, it is scary you're like wait a minute wait a minute the stocks are stocks are down but the, you know the the truth is, and it's been said by many, many, many people, is the value of the stock is down. But you haven't lost money unless you sell into that. So you know you you're the you're you're looking at it and thinking, okay, my my the stocks are down and the, my value has decreased, but you haven't lost any money really because you haven't sold. But the minute you sell into that low, you are going to lose money. That just time yeah. proves that over and over again. Yeah. And that's what, you know, I think is, you know, important. And, and the other key is, and, you know, there's, I think is what we talk about return, you know, st stocks, ultimately their return is predicated over time on earnings. So if you buy a particular company, they're going to be, they're going to go up in value over time if they continually have earnings. And what's very interesting, if you take a look at earnings, of the S&P 500 and superimpose that graph right over uh, yeah. the rate of return. It's very similar. It's very similar. It's within, you know, it's with half a percentage point, you know, depending on the, you know, the time frame you look at, but earnings, you know, in the moment, there may be some, you know, um, some variance, but over time, the return tracks the earnings growth and historically the earnings growth has been really good in the United States uh, economy. And, you know, we're, and despite, what people might say about, you know, the good or bad times we are, we continue to, we continue to innovate and continue to find a way. Um, and, and stocks have done that. And I think that's where, you know, again, it's, it's when it, when it's turbulent, when things are happy, everybody's fine, right? You know, if you're hiking and you're out in the woods and the sun's shining and you got, you know, there's a lake next to you, everything's great. You pop down, Bam. <laughs> have a snack. It's amazing. You know, you get in the lake, swim, uh, get back and start hiking somewhere. Everything is good. It's, but it's when it's turbulent, right? It's when there's bad weather or um, there's a hill to climb or, you know, those kinds of things, you know, you have to, you have to look, why in the world am I doing this? Uh, <laughs> and you realize that and you have to take, stop and take a breath and look around at your view. And it's like, this is, this is why we're doing this. And just like in stock investing, sometimes you got to stop um, and just reflect on why, why again, am I doing this? It's to have future purchasing power uh and at the same and stocks have historically been the way to do that and even though i'm scared i believe that you know i believe it's in the, the best interest in history and history has proven that again no guarantees for the future but history has time and time again through multiple wars economic crisis oil embargoes presidents you know con you know congress it doesn't you know global events uh that the stock market continues to go up in time again, using that reference, you know, a hiker with a yo-yo going uphill, right? I mean, that's, you know. Yeah, that's how this may be a topic for an entirely different episode. It probably is because we could talk a long time about this one. But diversification, I'm assuming diversification probably plays a role in your conversation with your with your clients. I don't know if you want to get into it now or you want to save it for uh, another podcast. Yeah, we'll save it because there's definitely some importance. And then there's really three types of diverse. We see three types of diversification. So one is asset diversification, which is, yeah. you know, you know, stocks, bonds, different types of stocks, different types of bonds, cash, those kinds of things. Then there's then there's tax diversification. So, you know, depending on, you know, how do you do you, how do you are you taxed while you accumulate and how are you taxed when you take it out? We want to make sure people are diversified there and then of course the last and probably most important in is and is something called time diversification you know and and really you really should start with that because you know your assets should be in alignment with the time in which you plan to take them and so mm -hmm. you know once it's really using those it's kind of once we have the time diversification we can look at the asset diversification and then also look at the tax diversification and yeah the trick is, is really in our client meetings, what we're doing is, you know, for those clients that are retired, we're moving those pieces all the time. So like a, like a, like a complex combination lock, if you will. Yeah. And it's, but it's, but it's the nice thing about it is it, it's really, it's three 
it's three concepts of three, which is really nice. I mean, you know, typically have three asset classes, you know, stocks, bonds, cash, you have, yeah. you know, um, you, you have short-term, long-term intermediate timeframes and then tax diversification. You have tax coming out. Um, you have no tax coming out. And then of course you have tax along the way and, and, it's it, it's a common thing, but yeah, we'll definitely talk about diversification um, in a, in a future podcast. So stay tuned for that. And I guess, you know, we've kind of talked a lot about it, but I, you know, staying the course is it sounds it's it sounds so uh, bland and you know unexciting, but uh, persistence wins. Uh, I think one of the key characteristics you have to have as an equity investor is persistence. And I think, you know, you mentioned earlier, we mentioned earlier uh, in earlier podcasts about my background in agriculture. And I think if you're a farmer, it's just persistence. You just stay with it. And so, um, and by that, you know, it's just one foot in front of the other, staying invested. It's $1 at a time saving for your future. Um, And, you know, just some crazy stats. Um, If, you know, if we were to go back 20 years ago, and say, you know, I'm going to put $10,000 in the S&P 500, the largest 500 companies in the United States. If you were to do that, you would have over $64,000 now. So 20 years ago, 10,000, today, 64,000. If you miss just the top 10 days in that 20 year period of time, like, hey, I want to get out or maybe I want to move and pick something else. If you miss the top 10 days, that rate of return drop or that total balance goes from 64,000 to 29,000. Wow. So you lose almost half just by missing the top 10 days. Wow. Um, and if you miss the top 20 days in that 20 year period, it drops to 17,000. So, and the paradox of all of this is that the best 10 days and the worst 10 days are typically very close together. <laughs> you know, not, not like years apart. They're very, yeah. you know, it's, I can say that in 2008 and 2009, some of the best trading days were followed by some of the worst trading days on a percentage basis. So, so again, you know, um, and you know, what's the, what, there's a story, I think, and this kind of leads me to the last point I want to make is it talks about averages, but you know, um, you know, everyone is everybody have in common. Everybody's like, everybody's better than average driver. Right. (laughs) (laughs) You know? And so, I mean, I can say people know the, my friends that are listening to this podcast, the the joke is my wife drives most of the places and it's because of my driving record. Right. So um, it's been a marriage saver for to have her drive. So (laughs) I am probably a below average driver and I'm, I'm okay with that, but you know, you've never met, uh, even though the, uh, there's there's good drivers and bad drivers, but you've never met a below average driver, right? So averages are kind of funny. So there's been some studies done of, uh, and you know, there's data on this. J.P. Morgan has some, uh, Morningstar, Dalbar, and the and the Institute. Uh, uh, man, I just I'm gonna have to stop again. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to say the three and forget the, I forget it's the ICI, but I don't, I from losing the acronym. So anyway, there's been some studies done on averages and compared to the S and P 500 and, you know, JP Morgan has information on this Morningstar actually has done uh, some studies. And then of course, Dalbar has done studies and, you know, the average investor over the last 20 years has given up over 2% per year on average to just the S and P 500. And they manage how they determine that is based upon, you know, money in and money out of the market. Right. And so, um, you know, there's the time it's getting better. It's getting better. And that, that's a good thing. People are actually staying in longer because the gap was larger, but it, on average over 2% has been given up just by, just by behavior. So again, and that doesn't sound like a lot, but 2% over 50 years is quite a bit uh, in dollars. And so, you know, that's what we really want you to, you know, know is that persistence is important to staying invested. And, you know, so those, those three, those three to four big points, which is, you know, why are we investing in the first place? Make sure you know why, because, you know, if you, if it's long-term, it's, it's good. If it's short-term, it's, you shouldn't be in stocks. Um, Two is you need to know the lay of the land volatility ups and downs are going to happen. Stay the course. Uh, that's going to happen. You need to be prepared for that. Uh, things like rebalancing help, adding 
cash or buying at a discount also helps during those times. Uh, and then three, you know, the, the last point is just remember to stay invested and stay in it. And that's what we would advocate for you to do. And, uh, and, you know, whether you work with us, you work with another advisor, that's fine, but, you know, have a coach, have someone a sounding board before you make some of these crazy, you know, decisions, you know, emotionally, uh, charged decisions sometimes aren't the best and, you know, investing when it seems like the entire world is falling apart can be difficult, but if you can remember that your goals are long-term, it will serve you well. Fair point. For those who are listening who are not existing clients of yours already who want to get in touch with you, what is the best way for someone to reach out and maybe start a conversation? Yeah, so we're open for uh, phone conversations. Uh, you know, 559-897-0040 is uh, a way to do that. We're here in California. Another way is if you go to our website, www.coddingtonwealthadvisors.com. In the top right-hand corner, there'll be the ability to book an appointment uh, to have a conversation uh, via phone or Zoom or, or um, you know, if you want to come on in, that's fine too. Yeah. And we just have an open conversation about, you know, where you are and where you would like to go. And, you know, kind of, if you will, plan your hike for your your financial future. You know, let's let's look at the map, but then let's talk about some some navigational intelligence for your uh, equity portfolio that will make sense for your goals. Yeah, and keep in mind the map is not the territory. Yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Jason. Listeners, thank you for taking the time to listen to this. I'm sure you found it helpful and useful. You should subscribe to this podcast. That way you won't miss another podcast, and that's easy to do. Just hit the subscribe button down there, and when Jason comes out with a new edition of the podcast, it'll be delivered to you. You won't miss one. And we'd also ask humbly ask, and I might add, if you like this podcast, rate it and share it with other people. Help spread the word about the podcast. In the meantime, until next time, on behalf of Jason and everybody at Coddington Wealth, I'm Bill Tucker reminding you to go out and live your best life today. Thank you. <laughs>